racing season. We're still in the muddy part of the year, though. The cyclocross season, which has gone on right the way throughout the winter. Two major trophies have been uh, contested during the winter: the uh, Super Prestige and the World Cup. In fact, they line the riders up with the leaders in the World Cup, taking the uh, best place at the front. And problem in the centre there. One of the Dutch riders has flicked his foot out of the pedal. He's gone straight back to that mass. And they all recognise they've got to get up in the top 20. Anybody in contention for the medals today? It's a very, very tricky right-hand turn just ahead of them. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> Left and sharp right. There they go. Well, it looks like they've all got round safe and sound. Actually, on this circuit, as we're watching now, jostling positions already there. Adri van der Poel, right in the centre picture in the orange, begin to set a fast pace, stretching them out. The French en masse just behind him in the white jersey, little red and uh, blue stripes on them. One of the British riders just going through. By the way, as they settle on this first lap, let me quickly run through the results from this morning in the junior category, which you saw uh, on our screens. Uh, the best British rider, Danny Connolly, with the British champions, 41st. Uh, Petty James, 43rd. Stephen Bailey's 51st. And James Alloway finished in 55th spot. That was this morning. The riders didn't cut the track up too much, so it's still very fast indeed. This massive crowd watching the world's best at cyclocross. If you've not seen this sport before, hang on in there. It's a combination of sheer skill on the bikes and an opportunity from time to time to get off the bikes, shoulder the uh, machines and run up the short, sharp slopes. So already the Italians begin to show on the front then. Bramati punching his way through in the pale blue colours of Italy. Ramati, winner of the Super Prestige Series and in the World Cup too. That's the man we've got to watch out for. In fact, he got some 35,000 French francs, about 17,000 pounds for winning the World Cup Series. And he's just come into this race in fine form. And he's already setting a hot pace of front. He's joined by Pontoni just there with the yellow, unusual crash out with a little peak on the front. I've not seen one like that before. Had a great time looking at all the bikes these riders are using. I never had a chance to have a look at his crash up before. So, Pontoni closing up on Bramati. Grunendahl just behind for Holland. A mass of riders coming here. The fellow there, number nine, in the uh, centre turning towards the right-hand side, Mike Clue. Some of my German friends are tapping the side there now before the start, saying, watch out for Mike. He's coming into form just at the right time. We'd have to wait and see. Past world champion in Munich uh, many years ago, looking to perhaps get a medal this time because next year the championships are being held in Germany. Nice for Mike to go there, defending some sort of position. Best Brit just goes through there. Looks like Peter Stevenson, a bit off the pace. And in fact, yes, here's Chris Young, number 47, always, his British champion won in 91, he always makes a slow start. And when you've got something like about 60 riders in front of you, Chris, you've got to go some to get up there at the front. And you can see the way they're hammering along here. There's not much chance of cutting through this little lot for Chris Young at the back, so we just keep our fingers crossed that he can find some gaps to get through. But they won't let go very easy here. Still then on the front, Pontoni. And already moving up too, I can see him on the bell, he's beginning to get himself up in the action. That looks like number 21, Vivekan. And Lucic just goes through. That's a nice move. The rider from Czechoslovakia just forced his way through. There he is. That's a good move by Lucic. Past junior champion. And he's now through. The red jersey, white crosses, that's the Swiss, and the defending champion of the world is Dieter Runkel. He wears number one. We'll pick out some of the numbers for you later on, so you can also have a good look in there. And this is the steep and very fast descent. Our cameras might not take it all the way down to the bottom, because at the bottom of this here, there's a very, very acute, sharp right turn, and they come back at you. In fact, now they switched off there, and we're looking back at some of the tail enders already strung out by this very fast start. That was uh, number 28, Raymond Duggan from... Uh, Canada, right the centre, picks the man with the yellow arms, that's Mike Kluger, great man in bike rider as well, and he's forced his way through now into second spot, Lucas just behind him in third, still the pace being set at the front by the Italians, see how tricky this course is, sharp left, sharp right, and one of the problems is, because the surface is so slippy, uh, if you go offline, you can easily come a cropper. We're looking now, slow motion in over. Look at Ramati. That's Lucius in the centre, number 79. 
And while we go through slow motion, we talked about the under-23s yesterday. Roger Hammond finishing 19th spot after that uh, very good start of it. He told me like, later on, and watch him slipping and sliding here, that uh, Roger just doesn't get enough of this sort of tremendously fast experience racing in Great Britain. And he had all sort of colds and things before Christmas, but he's got to go out and race on the continent, which he wants to do next year, to get him up to a medal again as he did as a junior. So Roger Hammond was 19th at 1 minute 18 seconds. Guy Matthew Guy was 23rd this morning, 1 minute 24. And uh, 47th was Richard Holloway, 62nd was James Taylor. My apologies to good people all across Europe who will be listening to Eurosport in English and aren't that interested in what the Brits did this morning and yesterday. But I know many of uh, our friends back at home want to know what happened to the Brits. There's a big crowd of Brits out here very elated with the way Hammond rode to begin with yesterday, but uh, they're not going to get much to shout about at the moment because the riders, the British riders, I saw them well towards the back. Barry Clark's riding, the rally rider in there, the British champion. Peter Stevenson's riding, Stuart Blunt, and we saw Chris Young at the start as well, so they're way off the pace at the moment. And already the French trainer, Manuel Manuel, start to move on to front. Manuel, this man, tremendous talent, won the Tour de l'Avenir this year, so a lot of roadmen are like to come through here. No, that's not me. <laughs> He's a bit bit on the screen, but there he is. So, with this group uh, coming through here, still closely packed, and coming to the end of the first lap. Look at that time on your screen now. Six minutes and 24 seconds, and it's 28 kilometres per hour. And look at this, it's still anybody's race. This is a cracking start to race so far, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of very tired legs by the time we come back to the end of this race. We're going to take a short break. Do rejoin us shortly. The elite racers now setting a hot pace here, coming up towards the end of the, uh, the third lap. And we've now got a bit of a split coming on here as Richard Grunendahl has gone towards the, the front of the pack and begin to open up uh, a gap just some six seconds there on your screen. Ramadi chasing and then Adli van der Poel, so it's a bit of a Dutch sandwich at the moment. Bate Vable just dropping off the pace of Switzerland. De Vos going through, and there the defending champions are about eighth in the line at the moment. Grundel on his way through now. Pontoni, there is a defending champion, and just behind him is Janice. I hope we pick that fellow up again because uh, he's quite a bit. Look at the way two of the Italians are up in this little top pack. And there, number 55, jumping back onto his bike. Finished 21st in the World Cup for this year, and that was uh, Vandelli, Claudio Vandelli of Italy, at the back end of this little lot, but uh, is this too early then in this race? They're going to do something around about nine laps, I think, to get the time just inside the one hour. And Grandal, who finished second twice now in the World Cyclocross Championship. There's a bit of friction before the start of this race, by the way, between the fellow you see just at the bottom of your screen and the other fellow in orange there, Adri van der Poel. Uh, it was mentioned that Jan Raas, who happens to be team manager of the Rubber Bank team, he had to sort of get the two together and try and knock the skulls together because they both want to win today. Vadri van der Poel has uh, had five times second place in the World Cyclocross Championships and both have come into this race in fine form and they wanted the, each to ride for each other but the, they've had to bury the hatchet somehow and I don't know whether they buried it in their heads or not but certainly they're riding well at the moment first and third. Slow motion showing the way these chaps leap on. You see the clipless pedals now, uh, their special shoes go hammering into them, they have to be specially designed so the mud doesn't get in their way, they bang the feet down and on they go. No longer the old toe clips and straps we used to have many years ago. Well, I must admit, I used to race with, uh, I suppose, the early sort of clipless pedal. I used to put uh, rubber studs underneath, the old uh, uh, rugby rubber studs under my cycling shoes, and, and stamp onto uh, double-sided pedals rather than having token the straps. And they used to grip just like the clipless pedals do now. So you've got to have this ability to jump off the bike, get running, get the bike on your shoulder. See how they put their arms underneath the down tube, round off the handlebars to stop the front wheel rocking all over the place. And there in the pits, the mechanics have been hosing down the bikes, and they'll give them a nice new clean bike as they go around the circuit. So essential to keep the mud out from the brake works and from running because a lot of the mud goes down over the back wheel and gets lodged behind the seat uh, post and the uh, and the back wheel. And that's for the top. Although it looks like it's been destroyed.